everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 94, I decided to devote this lesson to some guidelines and architecture diagrams as a result of an experience I had last week, which was uh, great material for a lesson. Uh, you see, I was at a, uh, well, virtually at a client site, and had to understand a particular architecture diagram. And this was the diagram that was presented to me. Now, here I have hidden the actual context with gray boxes with the letters A through I, but this in essence was the diagram. And as I'm trying to understand the architecture, I had a lot of questions. Now, my first question was regarding these communication points between C and E, F and G, and H and I. And the point was there was just a solid line with no arrows there. And so I did, wasn't sure what's the communication point. Now all this line indicated here was a communication point between C and E, F and G, and H and I, but I didn't know the nature of that communication. So I had to ask. As I continued to analyze this, I had another question that I actually had to pose. What does this bidirectional arrow represent? Is that a communication bidirectionally between C and D and E and F? Or is this, I just wasn't sure actually with <laughs> a bidirectional arrow, <laughs> so I had to ask. Uh, the other question I had as I was analyzing this architecture was in relation to the data. Notice A, B, and D all point to that database and G, H, and I and of course, D and F point to another database. And my question that I had to pose was, does that arrow represent a connection to that database? Or is that a read and write? In other words, it mattered to me in the context of this diagram I was analyzing, who is responsible for writing data to that database and who's responsible only for reading it. And that really mattered to me in the context because there are different techniques for accessing data other than having to read it from a database. And so I really wanted to know that read-write relationship. So again, I had to ask. And then finally, I'm taking a look at the diagram and all the communication points between the various services. I wondered, well, is all of this synchronous calls or is there some asynchronous aspect to this? I didn't know, so again, I had to ask. And so as a result of this, I thought I would take this lesson to show some of the guidelines that I use in architecture diagrams to convey clearly this shared understanding of the architecture. As a matter of fact, I'd really like to start with lines without arrows, because all this indicates is that there is a coupling level between these services, for example, C and E. But I don't know the nature of that coupling. This does not provide me enough information to extract any information out. And so my first guideline, or my first tip, is really always use arrows. Avoid this, um, I'm not sure, so I'm just gonna put a solid line. Now, admittedly, I know some of my lessons I've been called out for using just lines between boxes. <laughs> And so sometimes even I'm a victim of this. However, um, the point is when we use arrows, what I like to do is that arrow indicates a flow, either a request flow from one service to another, like from C to E, or information flow that's going from one service to another. And so if we use arrows, for example, now it becomes clear and notice there's an interesting aspect here. Um, C makes a request to E, but notice, G makes a request to F. I'm not sure if I go backwards one, how you otherwise would have identified that flow from F to G, but in fact, it is from G over to F. And then of course, H goes to I. Now I've got more information. And so the key point is try to avoid the use of lines without arrows. Now, I had another question again, and that was about these bi-directional arrows. As a matter of fact, I will go out on a limb and say that the use of bi-directional arrows is quite frankly just the same as not using arrows at all because it confuses me about who's requesting who and a lot of times it's well both are um, but I'm not sure and so the tip here is avoid the use of bi-directional arrows now I want to analyze what's going on uh, between C and D and E and F and because in this particular case 
there was a reason for C and D communicating bidirectionally. C made requests over to D. And then D processed some information and sent another request over to C. And so the point is there is truly bidirectional relationship. But instead of a bidirectional arrow, what my recommendation and practice is, is to actually show that as two arrows to make it clear that there is a request going from C to D, and then a request or a response going through a different channel from D back over to C at some point in time. Now I asked and analyzed about E to F because I saw a bidirectional arrow there and I said, is this the same? And it's like, no, no, no. Um, e is making a request for data from F and F is returning that data. You see, we come to a problem when we use arrows as a flow of information. And so here there was a mixture. The request was coming from E, but the information flow was going from F to E. And so in these particular cases, I do one of two things, everybody. I focus on the request. In other words, what's the context of the arrows I'm showing? A request is made for data from E to F. But in this case, the particular architect really wanted to show the fact that F returns information back. And so my recommendation was to use a very small dotted line to show that E is making a request to F, and F is actually returning information then back to E. And so this is a technique that I sometimes use, either a solid line, which is what I mostly use just to show the request, but if you do want to show the information is coming back into E from a request, then sometimes I do use this small, uh, fine-grained uh, dotted line. Let's come back to the data part that I had the question about because I wanted to know about the read-write responsibilities of all these services that mattered to me in the context of the problem I was trying to solve. And so with arrows, what my recommendation is this, use the arrows to indicate read-write, not just connection to a database. And that way we can leverage the arrow to actually show additional information in our diagram. In other words, look at the communication between D and that database. And watch what happens. So the arrow, what I use is indication to the database is a write, which infers a read. And then information that is a read goes the other way. And so from an information flow, which the data is really an information flow, notice A and B both write to that database. But D only exclusively does a read from that information because it has its own database, as you'll notice. Over here, F on the other side does a write. And as a matter of fact, look at this G, H, and I complexity over here. A lot going on over there, but look what that uncovered. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go backwards one. And what would you assume on this architecture diagram that G, H, and I all write to that data? But in reality, folks, no, H was the only service that actually wrote to that data. G and I, those services read from that information. That was important knowledge about the overall flow of information because now I can optimize and provide other alternatives for that particular mm, area <laughs> over there. The last question that I had, of course, was on all the arrows. And I wondered, well, is all this synchronous calls? Like, for example, maybe using REST or HTTP calls. And the answer was, oh, no, no, no. We're using async all over. And I'm like, well, I don't see where that is here. And so one technique, void of protocol, is this. Use solid lines for async. This is what I do. And large dotted lines for asynchronous calls. In other words, Watch what happens to this diagram when I ask the question and then qualify the answer about the communication points. Are you ready? Watch this. Turns out that C and D are fully decoupled from one another and both send messages on different channels. C sent a message to D and D may have taken a long time to process that information. C was not going to wait. This is not a request reply. 
um, but rather D was sending information back to C eventually through a different channel. And so I've got the bidirectional arrows, but also noticing that that is asynchronous communication. C communicates to E with a space, synchronous call. But notice now the communication from G to F. That's a one-way request, or in this case it was passing information, but it was a handoff. And so now same thing with H and I. This was important to me to know the coupling levels between these services. And so the point being, um, these are guidelines I use because now if we look at this architecture diagram, all of those questions I had, I would not have had to ask any one of those. Architecture diagrams are a way of conveying a shared understanding of the architecture. And by utilizing these four simple techniques with lines, it could become very clear about what's happening without having to ask anyone or look at documentation. Fantastic. So a um, couple of resources. Uh, of course, we don't talk a lot about lines, <laughs> but there is some references about documenting software architecture in our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which Neil Ford and I released in February of 2020. Um, also, uh, my website, uh, developer.architect.com, I do offer a lot of training courses virtually now, of course, um, and you can go to either my upcoming events page or my training page to find out what courses I offer and also when those are available. So this has been Lesson 94, uh, Guidelines for Architecture Diagrams, specifically looking at the lines and how to really effectively, clearly convey your understanding of what's going on with more additional information. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please stay tuned for other lessons and thank you so much and be sure and stay safe. Bye-bye everyone.